Hey guys, welcome back to Mayday Side Airsoft, Airsoft in Japan. And today we have something special. And it is the P90 by Crytac. Well, actually, this thing is actually by Cybergun, Crytac, EMG, and then licensed by FN Herstal. This P90 is gonna be my new submachine gun. And honestly, bullpups kind of suck in airsoft, but this thing, and I've read the reviews about it, is probably top in its class. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing, guys. So before we start, let's just take a look at the box. Nice and clean design, navy blue or whatever this is. Nice FN Herstal logo on there. Crytac and EMG, the main contributors to this thing, and it's up to par. And this is a Japanese version, so it's actually under one joule, so 0 0.98 uh, MS, and that's about 300 FPS or so. And we have the nice P90 uh, blueprint right here. So let's go ahead and open this thing real quick. Opens up like a suitcase and reveals the P90 upside down. <laughs> oh no. Wow. Wow, guys, that weight. You know what? Wow, that plastic. No play at all. God, look at this iconic form. If you played any video games ever, this P90 has shown up. And this feels great. It does not feel plasticky. I remember the very first time I ever held a P90 was the Tokyo Marui one that my friend had. Horrible. But this one actually feels good to shoulder. And it actually feels nice. It does take some getting used to because I have pretty small arms, but even the peephole is nice on this thing. The weight's in the back for the most part, but it's pretty balanced. So it's time to go tip to butt with this P90's muzzle device. It's held in by a grub screw, 14 millimeter counterclockwise, and does not come with an O-ring, so I put my own on here so it doesn't get stuck, and it's pretty short and sleek. Now we're gonna move on to the rail. The rail system is full metal and has the P90 markings and is completely ambidextrous. It also has three sets of iron sights, one on the right, one on the left, and a tiny little peephole in the middle. It's okay. Moving on to the chassis here, it is a full polymer build, one-to-one -one scale with the real P90, and it is a dream to hold. The trigger is also plastic polymer, and it also has an ambidextrous select fire switch for automatic and semi. So the charging handle acts to actually open the hop-up unit by pushing it down, and you can get this little door down here to access the Crytac rotary hop with very clickable stages, so it's really easy to set and reset. So let's talk about that proprietary Crytac P90 magazine. It is a lot better than the Maruri one, and it actually sports a follower and bolt stop function as well as a 50 round switch from 50 to 200. I'm gonna be using 50. So for the battery, I'm using a 7.4 LiPo and it can be accessed in the back of the rubberized stock here by pushing down with a quick change spring. Anyway, it also comes equipped with Deans out of the box and you can just insert it in the space here, stuff it in and you're good to go. Okay guys, let's test out that trigger, but we are clear. There's no magazine inserted and the BB chamber is empty. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on semi-auto and test out this trigger, here we go. Wow. So usually for bull pups, you have to pull all the way back for the trigger to respond. But this thing. Wow. And it's equipped with a micro switch, so. That's good for 7.4. That's really nice. So you only have to pull a certain amount of length and then it'll go. Usually you have to pull all the way back, but you don't have to with this one. So if you change it to full auto, a half stroke will do semi and a full stroke will do full auto. So that is actually really nice. Like I don't feel like I'm I, I'm pulling too hard, like a Titan. Like, it's pretty distinct. It's pretty distinct where the full auto and the uh, semi-auto begins. That is really, really nice. This is on a 7.4. 
and that micro switch and the MOSFET, it prevents it from locking up, so. I like it. But it is quite heavy, not gonna lie. Like just in general, like the spring coming back, it is quite heavy. But that is probably the nicest trigger I've felt because I remember shooting the P90 on the Murui. Horrible. So I, I feel like some people That's really, really, really nice. Really, really nice. So I feel like on a full auto field, if you can ever play at one, you just put this thing on full auto and then you just go. So, because when you go semi, when you go full auto, you only have the half stroke for semi. See that? Half stroke for semi. And then full stroke for full auto. But with semi auto, you have to go all the way. Actually, no, you don't. Wow, it also does the half travel too. That's really great. It's actually skirmishable. And the iron sights are actually really good. Like the little tiny peak hole, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. We're gonna use 0 0.2 gram BBs to test this thing now. Let's see the BBs actually loading. See? Oh, there you go. So we got 50 rounds in there and you can actually see that it's like that. All right, so we got our iPro, we got our target over there, about five meters or something like that, because my house isn't that big. Um, and we're on safe, and this is empty, and we're gonna just go ahead and test just some general groupings. This is probably human-sized target at CQB range. So we're gonna get our magazine that's already loaded, 50 rounds in. And that is really cool. Okay, guys, here we go. So let's do it on semi-auto first. So the first shot doesn't feed. Pretty low. Jeez, that is straight. Laser beam. Wow. I don't know if you can see those groupings right now, but they're really, really tight. Really, really tight. Let's try with the full auto switch. Damn, that's just going straight through the thing and hitting my mailbox. I think I'm gonna stop it there. <laughs> so if you take a look at the grouping, even on full auto, this thing is pretty damn accurate. Obviously it's not zeroed in, but goddamn, this is nice. Really nice group, really straight, and that's with the hop off. And the cool thing is, when you run out of ammo, there's a bolt stop. So it's not gonna fire when you're out. So just go to reload, and you're out. See, because the follower is pushing it down, so you can't. Just reload. Perfect feature. You guys know me. I like my uh, bolt stop and I like my reel count. So this thing is perfect. All right, so we're gonna use a tracer now so you guys can actually see the trajectory of this thing. All right, guys, so we got Mark from Red Wolf Airsoft because I watched his uh, review for this video before buying it. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot him in the face. Counterclockwise, so it's very easily, you can very easily put on a tracer just like that. There you go. You got a nice tracer. <laughs> All right, so we got our tracer BBs. Goodbye, Mark. Nice, you guys see that? Maybe you can't. All right, try it again. Goodbye, Mark. There you go. This thing is laser, dude. It's laser. Let me, let me, let me, let me switch the camera. All right, so if you look at Mark's face here, it is pretty goddamn accurate. I know I wasn't really sighting in because it was kind of dark, but consistent spots here, right around the cheek, few in the eyes, aim for the eyes, actually hit the eye, hit the ears a little bit, but very, very consistent. Hop off. Cool thing is if you set it up for 200 rounds, you can actually see the BBs loading in. You'll see as it wraps around, load it all the way around. I think is really cool. So it's only appropriate that we mag dump this thing now. So if you ever want to like do a press check, 
you can kind of just do a little check like this. And he's like, oh shit, okay, I have this amount of BBs. So it's actually really, really cool. All right, guys, you guys can see the BBs go down. Full auto, iPro on, here we go. Jeez. Now, there's one more feature of this gun. So I was talking about the trigger pull feels really nice, but you can actually adjust it with this little tiny hole here to make it even shorter. So you get yourself a hex wrench and there's a little Allen key inside, as you can see, like that, right? So, so according to this, turn the hex screw clockwise to elongate, turn it counterclockwise counterclockwise to make it shorter. So I want to go counterclockwise, so I'm going to be turning right, turn it right like this, and that makes it shorter. That's really nice now. Really nice. Yeah. Really nice. Let's see. Ooh. How about on full auto? This on 7.4. Do not do 11s. It seems I can even push it even more. That's real nice. Oh. Nice. Look at that trigger pull now. Hold up. Very nice. Keeps up with the UAV. And the recoil from the gearbox is right on your cheek, so you kind of get a little bit of recoil, especially on full auto. Guys, this thing is fucking beautiful. All right, guys, so we got our 0.2 gram bay base. Hop is off on the P90. Let's go ahead and measure this thing. 0.2 gram BBs, Japan regulations. Here we go. 89. 90. 89. 90. This thing is pretty weak. And actually, I could actually probably use that at Asso Biba. 89, on average 90, guys. Let's do a little hop, maybe one third. 89, yep, 89. That is Asso Biba ready, guys, right under 90. I can use this at all CQB fields. Max hop. 65, 62. 64. Damn, that is a drop. Apparently, if the hop is too high, it'll hit the suppressor and damage it. So you don't want to set it to max. RPM check, full auto. Here we go. 90. RPM is 25. 25 RPM, guys. That's really good. Okay guys, you know what time it is? It is reloading time. So we got ourselves two spare magazines. These things are like $50, bro. Or like, I guess American, maybe like 40 bucks now, a piece. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna do about pouches, but I got those nylon ones, so hopefully that'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just see how it feels to reload this thing. So we're gonna put this on safe. We're gonna put iPro on just in case. And let's just see the reload system. So if I had it like in my pouch here, like this. That is very difficult. You guys gotta even know like, there's a very particular way of reloading this thing. It's not as intuitive as it seems. I think you gotta do the modern warfare where you kinda just hold it out in front of you like this, instead of trying to keep it straight. And I think that works. Reload, just throw it on the ground. Yeah, but you gotta be careful about throwing it on the ground, especially if they're uh, empty because you'll break the follower. And these things cost as much as gas magazines. Can you do attack reload? 
Nope. Nope. Unless you get one of those Lalax like double feed mag things. Like the mag clamp. That is probably, yeah, you have to hold it out like this. You gotta do the, the, the modern warfare. Cause this feels the most natural and I just clamp myself. Yeah, all right, I'm fat as fuck, but we got it on our belt. So maybe if I can get a second pouch here, I could just kind of do it like that, I'm so fat. So if I reload, dump pouch. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty hard, man. Unless it has to be facing up like this. So, reload, dump it, yeah. It has to be facing up, so the BBs, unless you go this way. Ah, oh, no, because then it's like weird. Nah, the BBs have to be facing up, facing in towards your body. <coughs> Dump it. This is gonna be a bitch. Definitely gonna have to take some training. Even the shouldering is a little. A little particular, particular, but the shouldering is actually not bad. Okay, pretty cool. Nice. Okay, so the last thing about this P90 is that it's takedown is really easy. So you just press this little lever here, a little button, and you can take it apart like this. And if you want to remove the hop chamber, you can see there's this little indents here like this. You can kind of see it. You can just like twist it, and then it'll come right out your inner barrel just like that. Just like that. Super easy. So super easy to work on the tech. The gearbox is based on V6. But um, it is very easy to uh, put in V2 parts, so it's pretty easy. You could also change the trigger spring. And if you really wanted to, you could just pull the gearbox right out of the stock. But this is how you could take it down for transport if you ever need it. And it just easily slides back in like that. This is probably the coolest AEG I own. All right, guys, so this has been the FNP90 by Cybergun, EMG, and Crytac. And this thing is absolutely insane. Great trigger response, great features, amazing build. Love the magazine features on this thing. With the quick chain spring system, the Dean's connections, the iron sights are actually good, the metal build on the top, the polymer on the bottom, and that trigger. It, it does take some getting used to for the full auto, but this thing is actually really, really nice. I cannot wait to take it into CQB here in Japan. And I can't wait to show you guys gameplay of this iconic thing. What do you guys think of the FNP90 by those three companies? I'm not gonna say it again. 
Let me know in the comment section down below. And are you excited to see some gameplay of this, guys? See ya next time. Airsoft in Japan. Bye.